When people make documentaries, they don't necessarily take into consideration the pre-production side for their project. A lot of the times with documentaries, you do need to write out your ideas. And I think that's a really big contributing factor towards the success of your documentary. I made multiple documentaries in the past five years or so throughout my college, post-college. I wanted to make this video to give people a better idea of what it takes to do the writing side slash pre-production side of making a documentary. I think it's important to figure out the pre-production side of what you're doing so that when you eventually are on the shoot, you now have a reference, you now have a better idea of what exactly it is that you are going there to shoot what exactly it is the story that you're trying to tell. So I broke it down into a few steps and we'll get into it. So step number one is making a summary of your documentary. So essentially what this means is making a brief summary, kind of like a log line for a narrative film. To get a better idea of what your documentary is, it's nice to have like a nice little short paragraph or a one or two sentences showing exactly what the documentary is going to be about. So what this kind of does is it helps to identify the main characters of your documentary. When you write it down and say it aloud, it kind of validifies, it helps you identify what the documentary is going to be about. Another big part of this summary is it helps to identify the characters of your documentary. Who's the protagonist? Who are we following throughout this whole process? What is the challenge that this person is gonna overcome? And so on and so forth. Just identifying what the premise is, the summary of your documentary, can help to identify the characters of your documentary. Along with this summary, I like to briefly write out who or what the doc is about, what kind of conflict is going on that the documentary is going to be following, and what is happening or what you expect to happen as a resolution to the documentary, what you come to find out, what your audience will eventually come to find out as a result of this documentary. Step number two is to outline your idea. So kind of going hand in hand, I like to write out a little summary first, and then next what I'll do is make an outline of the entire documentary. So if this was an essay, the first paragraph is gonna be kind of like the overview of everything, and then the next following paragraph goes back to your topic sentence, right? So what I like to do is kind of like take a piece of what I would do for a narrative, and not so much as script out everything, but just make an outline of what you expect to come from your documentaries. So my documentaries are usually people-based. They follow a person's journey and conflict and how that eventually is resolved. So what you're trying to do in this outline is make a beginning, middle, and end. Everything in between that is gonna be plot points, quote unquote. What you typically do for a script, I kinda like incorporate into this. So, but my plot points in this case are going to be questions. In my outline, I include the questions as we are going along with the story. So in the beginning, the questions are gonna be more light. They're gonna be more introductory. I usually start with a hook. And then from there, I talk about who this person is, what they do, where they're from, who they are, getting a general idea of who this person is. So the questions that I like to go with next are kind of showing more of what the conflict is, their personal conflict with their external conflicts. So the questions are geared generally around that. And in between this outline, I, as you can see, I'm putting questions and then I'm also putting Nat sound breaks. A Nat sound break essentially is when you break from interview audio, interview voiceover and B-roll to a current moment or something that's happening within the time of the documentary. So here's an example of a Nat sound break in my most recent documentary, Still Learning. Uh, I'll put the link below if you want to check out the full thing, but here's like a, a little example of what a Nat sound break is. I get 30 questions that say, how do I do this? And I go, oh, right, I forgot that part. Um. I think Valley's in Costco. Um, <laughs> anyway. Uh, I'm in Vallarta. Oh, oh I love Vallarta. Okay. Extra points just totally for going to class while you had to do business. I appreciate it. My name is Ron Mita. I teach screenwriting and... Basically, I am cutting away from the documentary, from the interview, from the voiceover to a moment. And this moment is important because it helps to drive what is happening next, what the next interview questions are going to be about, it helps to identify more with the person. Generally, these Nat sound breaks correlate to the story as well. It's not just a random moment or something happening in time that doesn't correlate to anything else. Typically, it's something that correlates to your story. And then I like to end it with 
kind of like an overview of the previous questions, as well as getting into the nitty gritty, getting more at that truth that I'm trying to uncover. And that is actually gonna be the next step. So this is something that I generally don't see a whole lot of when it comes to documentary education. It's something that I think is one of the most important things that you should be thinking about in your whole documentary, finding the truth of what it is that you're trying to uncover. In my documentary, Healing Julie, the whole premise was about a woman who has lupus nephritis, which is an autoimmune disease that attacks your kidneys. So in this documentary, the truth that I was trying to uncover was something along the lines of figuring out what this woman was doing to heal herself. And that exactly was what my questions were kind of geared around. They were kind of geared around figuring out who she was, her environment, her background and everything. And then also figuring out what exactly she was doing in this process of healing. What was she doing in the morning? What was she practicing? What is this, what is Kundalini? That's something that she was doing to help herself. So I'm trying to figure out the truth to this whole thing. And sometimes when you ask these questions, they will eventually dig something else up. They will come up in conversation. And that comes with practice with the interviewing process because sometimes it's important to ask the right questions. And I could totally make a video on that as well later on. But for now, I think it's important to identify the truth that you are trying to uncover in your documentary. It's important to find these truths in your documentary because it brings in a human element as well. It allows for the audience and you, the interviewer, to be more connected to this person when you start understanding who they are and the truth behind what is going on or whatever the situation is. It makes it more realistic and it helps to identify their goals as well. The person's goals going forward and what they're trying to do so that humanistic element is very important to convey to your audience as well. It's what keeps people interested. It's what keeps people wanting to learn more. It depends on what you're trying to do with the documentary. I like to make documentaries that promote change, that are trying to figure out a solution to a problem or identify a solution to a problem or identify the problem that people are going through and have a better understanding of what exactly that is and how they are dealing with it and what that's doing to them and the people around them. As a result of making this documentary, I wanna be able to make a change. So if you don't do this, if you don't find the truths in your documentary, you're not exactly figuring out anything. You're not proving any points. You're not trying to make any steps towards that change. You're just kind of showing a story and whether or not it's interesting, I think documentaries are there to, or films in general, are there to push the envelope, push the level of understanding of humans and this is getting really in depth but like yeah you want to make sure you are identifying the truth so that you can make those steps towards your goals of what you want out of your documentary so identify the truths so step number four is to identify your style this is definitely something that comes with time i think style is very opinion based but if you have that artistic mind you have an idea you could see exactly what uh, you want your documentary to look like, to feel like, to be expressed through the visuals and stuff like that. I would definitely say try to identify your style. Try to write down the themes of the documentary. Uh, here's some themes that I wrote down for my upcoming documentary that I'm making. Getting an idea of the style that you want is important to include in all of this because it's what you're going to be going for here on out. So you wanna identify what your style is, what your cinematography is gonna look like, and that coincides with the things that you will need to bring eventually as well. So what I like to do is I like to identify the themes of the documentary. I like to identify the feelings that I want the audience to feel or understand as, as a result. Another thing that can be included in this is like making a lookbook. If you wanna go that far of your organization and getting a better idea of what it is you're making, get links from other documentaries or other videos or other films and compile them in one area so that you can see exactly what it is that you liked about this documentary. The cinematography in this documentary, how they did the voiceover and transitions and the editing in this documentary, having that all in one place allows you to then take bits and pieces or whatever you need and compile that and organize that. Having that there is definitely important. It helps to identify your style. So the last step is writing out the gear that you will need. 
I think it's important to include this in your outline and your pre-production for your documentary because it helps to identify what you have at your disposal and what you may eventually need. If you write down the you know specific shots that you want, like you want a driving shot or you want to go somewhere and you need this specific gear to do this, this and that, you want a drone shot, whatever, you should probably write down what you have at your disposal. And if you don't have certain things, you can always rent things out. That's something that I do. And I think it's really awesome that you can do these days. So it's not the end of the world when you don't have something at your disposal, you can just rent it out. Having the gear written down also helps to figure out what you'll need for the interviewing process, what you'll need for specific shots or big moments. It just, having your gear written down is always helpful. To me, what's most important for your documentary isn't necessarily the equipment that you're using. I think the story is always forefront. The gear kind of comes secondary. And when you get more developed, when you get more practice and reps in with making documentaries, you kind of can go into more of like the little things that make your documentary more stylistic. Like for me, some of the essentials include like a camera, lenses, lenses help to determine what kind of story you're telling as well. They have like a look, they have something about them that may help you with your documentary later on. For this documentary I'm working on right now, I am getting a Helios 44-2 lens because I like the unique look out of it and I think it really suits what this documentary is going to be about. So I'm gonna be using that lens. Other things that help as well is yeah, obviously a microphone, a really solid microphone is gonna help you in the long run for your interviewing process, for your run and gun kind of shoots. Having a good microphone is very important. So camera, lenses, microphone, lighting, if you need it, you can make do with a reflector or anything outside. That's kind of another topic as well that I can go over in another video is interviewing techniques and what to do for lighting. But I think there's a lot that I've accomplished in the beginning where I didn't have any lighting equipment at all. I just kind of went with what I had. That's just, uh, that's generally what I like to include in my kit. So this is all the steps. Thank you if you got this far into the video. I definitely want to make more videos like this and kind of maybe even go into some of these steps. So please let me know if that would be interesting. Uh, subscribe if you haven't already. Feel free to leave a comment below and ask me what else you'd like to know about documentaries. And I can definitely answer them in the comments or make a whole video about it. Just. Let me know. I am working on another documentary coming up. I'm very excited about it. It's gonna be interesting and I will definitely make more videos describing that journey. Thank you very much for watching and uh, have a good day.